You guys made sure this is the right product, correct? I would love four hours of no rain. So now that the stairs are done and the concrete is done uh, on the patio part of things, it's time to start building this kitchen. Pit Boss just dropped a brand new series of griddles that have all kinds of awesome features that we'll show you guys a little bit later. And they hooked Sam up with one for this project, as well as a Kamado. So we wanna build something in this area uh, in order to give Sam ultimate cooking experience for all of his meat sweats and outdoor needs. This should be a little bit similar to the one I put on my deck last year. A couple different tweaks and different uh, changes we're gonna do on this one. First things first, we're gonna be using metal studs instead of pressure treated two by fours, which we did last time. This should be a little bit faster and it's definitely fireproof for all of you complainers out there that thought my last one would catch on fire. By the way, still hasn't caught on fire. We're gonna do concrete countertops in place as well as a uh, stone veneer on the front and potentially a custom door. One thing you wanna make sure you're considering with your outdoor kitchen is how you actually plan on cooking and what you're gonna be putting in it. We're fortunate We've got the two grills we're gonna be including here. Brand new Pit Boss griddle and a Kamado cooker. Sam just got both of these, but after talking about it a little bit, we think that a straight run, and we'll do a little lower shelf here for the Kamado, right? Yeah, we'll keep it at this height by doing a low countertop, and then we'll have some countertop space here. What's cool about this griddle, this, it's like a freestanding unit. It comes on this little stand, so if you're in the backyard or whatever, you can do that. We're not gonna use it for this necessarily because we're gonna build in the countertop for it, but I think yeah. I'm gonna hold on to it and maybe like, I don't know, if we go to Kenny Chesney or something. Jordan likes the bottle opener and this is a paper towel holder, that's fun. No, that's really well thought out. The other thing you wanna make sure you're considering when you're making an outdoor kitchen is how you're gonna be transporting your stuff from in to outside. One thing we made sure we didn't underestimate on my outdoor kitchen was where we're gonna set down our meat. Um, a lot of people will stuff things super close together. And if you look at any designs on Pinterest or the internet or whatever, with no countertop space in between, and then when you come out and something's hot, you take something off the Kamado, you need to set it in a pan on a tray or something. We're thinking we're gonna do that low, like Sam just said, and then we'll do about a two foot counter, <clears throat> then the griddle, and then another two foot counter. And then we'll frame out an opening down here, so that way we can get a propane tank in and out. Um, we have it already, lined for an electrical outlet in case Sam wants to roll out his vertical smoker or his 1150. But all in all, you like this layout? You like this setup? Yeah, I think this is gonna be fantastic. We'll have a little bit of storage, a little bit of power. I'm super pumped. I think this is gonna be great. Start yeah, we're gonna get a rough awesome. doodle together to make sure everything's to size. One thing we gotta consider here, you have to compensate for the thickness of whatever your face material is gonna be. So we're super pumped. We're working with MSI, we're going with one of their interlocking stack stones on this project, and this has a random width and thickness. So what we wanna make sure is that when we build our frame, that we have a quarter inch for our hardy backer, and then another, let's say an inch and a half for countertop overhang and for this material. So everything lines up perfectly. The last shop I was in, I had metal stud walls. I had some leftover, a good reuse of materials. They're not flammable, which is good for an outdoor kitchen. We're gonna start out and figure out our way on kind of how we're gonna do this with the short box and then we'll work our way to the bigger stuff. And we're using self-tapping metal screws to put everything together. So without further ado, let's get to it. These go together pretty simply now. Part goes right inside, and then we just use self-tapping metal screws to put everything together. Bada bang. It's a box. Now we just gotta make a couple more. More boxes. Need more box. Need more box. Sam's going to be like, here's the hibachi chef and Sam. Oh, yeah. oh, there's the pressure. Don't mind me just watching. Game up with a game plan for like a hidden door. You just seem like you're asleep, my guy. Really? So oh, I'm sorry. Do you do everything in one take, jackass? So Sam and Jordan slammed this thing together yesterday. Now the next step is to put some cement board on it. We've got quarter inch for all of the faces and half inch for what we're gonna use for the tops. That should give us a little bit more rigidity and um, keep it a little bit light. We're going to face it before we put it into place. That way everything's square plumb and good to go. And then we will level it with plastic shims over where it's gonna live permanently and uh, tap con it down into the concrete. One thing we kind of just came up with was uh, how we were gonna do an access because we need to get a propane tank over here. 
Sam only had one coffee because he's trying to wean himself off. I had five cups of coffee, and there's potentially a hidden door on the horizon, and we all love stuff that's hidden. So let's get rid of it. Make sure that the propane tank fits before you are finished with the project. See if you can lay a propane tank on the side, or if that's like a horrible idea. So the one kind of issue we've run into is uh, we're a little bit out of square with the frame, which is uh, not surprising. It's a bunch of you know boxes kind of stuck together. We're gonna use the factory edges on the hardy board and square this thing up. And so essentially I'm just gonna lay this down, line up the ends on the outside, mark the face on the back side for where our cuts are gonna come, and then go ahead and cut them. We've got a special blade. Stop clamping shit. Don't ever premature clamp. We've got a special blade in our circular saw which should help us get pretty clean cuts. All right, so for the hidden door, we're gonna use the cutout from the same sheet. And then what we're gonna do is recess some magnets and it should magnetize right to the frame because they're steel studs. Just have to be pretty precise. The stone on the front should hide any imperfections. We have no idea if this is gonna work, but you never know until you try. Let's get squirrely. Before we go any further, Sam and Jordan are literally starving. It is hot as the devil's asshole out here and it is time to feast. And what better way to break in the brand new Pit Boss Grill than firing up some cheese steaks. Let's go. Here we go, boys. So real quick, before we feast, this thing's sweet. The first time we've cooked on it, it's got a lot of killer features. It's got a ceramic top, which is super easy to clean. This awesome new hood. Forward-facing grease trap, it makes it a lot easier to remove your grease trap. That paper towel holder, the coolest part about it is this entire top lifts out, has a couple little feet on it, and you can put it wherever you are. That's why we're putting it in Sam's uh, kitchen island. It's gonna be awesome. If you wanna check out more, I've got a link down in the description. And if you want to win one of these, wait around till later in the video. I'll tell you how to enter. And then there's also a link down in the description to get you two more entries. We're giving one of these away, one of the stacks away. Let's go. So we're in the middle of the outdoor kitchen project and instead of being idiots and stoning this first, we're going to do the countertops. And we're giving ourselves a bit of a redemption here. We're doing outdoor concrete countertops that should be so much easier and so much better than the ones we did inside my house. Everything is fucked. It's all a terrible idea. So to make these things simple, we've already got these four spots is where we're gonna put the counters. And we're once again working with Z counter forms. And this time we're going with this nice bull nose. This will give it an, uh, what we think is gonna be a pretty cool look. So we've gotta cut the tops for this and then get everything set into place and then go ahead and we'll start putting on our counter forms. So to pour these in place, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is cut your counter top bottoms. For these specific forms, you leave a piece of hardy board underneath. So we're gonna cut these tops first and then we'll get those nice and square and plumb and in place and screw those down. Then we add our outside. We have the countertop this is a kitchen. in position. Uh, everything is sort of squared, leveled, placed exactly where we want it to. We're gonna take the old hammer drill and drill into this beautiful new slab we just poured. And we're just gonna use some tap cons to just to fasten this thing down. It shouldn't take too long. This concrete is uh, mostly cured, so this shouldn't be too terrible. Let's do it. All right, that's all fastened in. Now we need some countertops. Magic countertops. If you guys want to see how we did this, make sure you're subscribed so that you guys can see this. It'll be the video that comes out after the one that you're currently watching. All right, so now that the counters are in, we can start our stonework. Um, we've got these killer stone veneers 
from MSI. I'll have a link down in the description. These are really, really, really nice. So first thing we're gonna do is kind of lay out and start with our corners. And because we leveled the entire thing first, we should be level as we work our way up. So we're gonna lay out some corners first and just kind of get these ready to rock and roll. And then we'll mix some mortar and get to sticking these things on. This should move pretty quick once we get going. So it's super important for uh, a job like this to make sure you're using the right mortar. We have a stone veneer mortar, but uh, MSI recommends this brand or another brand. It's on their website and they have a ton of great installation information as well. We're gonna mix it to about a uh, peanut butter consistency or we're gonna get ripped. Little dry. This is gonna suck. Why the f You guys made sure this is the right product, correct? As far as I know it is. So we're having some adhesion issues. It is super humid out, just like it was yesterday when we did the concrete. And the water's drying out of our mortar so quickly that it's not creating that fusion. So we went and got a different mortar. I literally just put a whole wall up and then the whole thing fell off. So we're gonna give this another shot. Perseverance, I don't even know what another word would be for the moment. Um, it's hot, I'm incredibly aggravated. But you gotta get the work done. So that's what we're gonna do. So we still have Sam's uh, tent whatever the hell the thing's called. We're gonna use it for some shading because it seems that things were drying a lot more consistently when we had them in the shade. When they were in the sun, it was just baking. I had to take this whole corner off. I also think that that mortar was not the right stuff, even though the jag off at the store we bought it at said it was. Don't always trust those people. I know more than you. All right. So we were able to find the stuff that MSI recommends on their website. Jordan's mixing that up right now, and uh, we're gonna try to slap this on there. So to do this hidden door, we've got the part that we cut out from the front. My thought is, I don't know if this is the best way to do it. I'll just keep working across and then cut vertically where the door is going to land. And then that should just make it easy to pop out and hide pretty decently. But before I do that, I gotta make the door attach to the interior frame. And to make that happen, we've got our good old neodymium magnets and some four minute epoxy from Total Boat. It should work in theory in my head. The only thing I'm kind of concerned about is if it's too heavy with the stone on, but these magnets are pretty strong. So we're gonna get these sunk into here and then uh, test this thing out. All right, so the magnets are now on, which means this should, in theory, go where it's supposed to. Go to your home. Go to your home. Are you too good for your home? Bada bang. Now what I can do is like, this is the next piece to go in. I can mark it here and use our square. I can mark a straight line because these edges are fairly straight. And then I'll be able to put both pieces on, one on the door, one on this, and they should fit together. As long as it's not too heavy, I don't think it's gonna break. I don't know shit about shit, but it sounds like it'll work. Cool. I like that enthusiasm. <laughs> Sweet tits. This is looking fantastic. It's now Monday. The last little bit that needs done is over here, side of the old griddle. The gas line needs to go through it. We ended up having to order a longer gas line just because of the way we designed this because we don't want to drill through the countertop, which we could have done, but we were worried about moisture getting through it where if it's under this little overhang, I think it'll work out better. So we got ourselves a little diamond cutting hole saw thingy. So we're going to punch a little hole through the side. All right, so Sam and Jordan just dominated finishing up the uh, the stone work. Now we gotta get this thing cleaned up, but before we do that, we wanna create a little bit of a better uh, hole here for our hidden door, which I gotta say, did not think this was gonna work at all, and somehow it is. So we're thinking the best way to go about it is you need ventilation when you're putting any sort of propane or can that's gonna hold gas like that inside of one of these. So if we put a couple holes in this door, it should allow for plenty of airflow to get in there, as also as well as put out like a little hidden vent over in the corner or something. We're gonna cut some more holes. You can start these just like tile work. You go straight up and down, it's gonna wanna jostle. I, I like to like lean into it. We're gonna clean it off real quick and then we're gonna put some seal on there. This thing is gonna look so wet. 
because it's supposed to. And with the sealer, God, you guys in your dirty minds. Fire up, Jay. You're about to impregnate the stone. It literally That's says it on the bottom. Term. All right, so the last thing we have to do with the stone is put a sealant on it. This product comes recommended from MSI. It's an impregnating, no dirty joke, sealer, which means it's gonna get into the stone. This is real stone, it's just stone veneer. And that'll seal it up nice and tight and actually keep it, it should keep it looking wet. Really, really like bring this thing together. We're gonna apply it with a brush and some rollers. And it doesn't need a mix or anything, readily available at the depot. Oh, this is one of the most satisfying parts of doing this type of work. You put it on pretty heavy, and then you come back after about five minutes and wipe it. And once again, our neighbors felt the need to copy us. So they're over there with a the gas axe having a good old time. She's sealed and the last thing left to do is get out the grills. Let's go. And that's gonna be a wrap in the outdoor kitchen. This thing turned out sweet. I think there's gonna be a lot of meat sweats here. And with that, meat sweats is gonna be our word to enter to win this video's opportunity to get a griddle, to get a grill, or to get one of those, or a prize pack. One of the four items we're giving away with this series from Pit Boss, meat sweats down below, comment that and hit the like button, get entered to win. There's also a link, you can hit that, get two more entries. This is video number four, which means total, you've got six opportunities to win. Enter all of them and I'll see you on the next video.